Hey, everybody, and welcome to the February 2023 Pantheon Rise of the Fallen development stream. I'm your host, David Ronick Schlau, and with me, as always, is my co host, Anthony Guidi, aka Minus. What's up, Minus? How's everything going? I'm, I mean, this might be the best stream that ever we ever do. You just, you just got through the intro like perfectly. And you're not you're supposed even, to, I'm you're just not saying. supposed to call it out, and it was supposed to go smooth. Now you've, you've called attention. No, to no. It. I think listen, people are actually saying in chat right now, great intro, great job. Everybody, please give him a round of applause in chat. Let's give him, let's give him some love in there. I love that. It's it's only taken what? How many of these have we done? I don't know. You've done them well before I was here. So, yeah, but anyway. I, Definitely tune into next month's because it's going to be a mess. Um, anyways, David, uh, things are great, as always. Um, you know how much I look forward to these. I mean, we both say it to them, but I don't think they understand behind the scenes. Like when we're sitting here ready to launch, all the banter that we put out here would probably be enough for another show. Um, so, um, But even more so, I'm, I'm really excited for this one because uh, we're going to show a lot of cool stuff today. Um, and we think that we'll be able to hit some of that visuals itch that our community has. And, and David, you can comment on this too, but I think in fairness, like we want to show whenever it's possible. We just want to make sure it's ready to show at least at a state where we're happy with where it's at, even though we know it's going to go further, but that's kind of the decisions we always have to make. We could show it in really early stage, but how much cooler is it if we wait, you know, one more month, stuff like that. So, um, it's a, but it's a fine line for sure. And it's definitely, it's yeah. hard. Uh, yeah. but luckily this month we have a lot to show. So, yep. Yep. Um, so how, how are you? You you asked how I was, so how are you? <laughs> I'm great. I'm excited <laughs> to show the, I'm, I'm excited to show the goods this week. All right. Well, I really appreciate that specific answer of how good you are and what's going on in your life. People want to know, David, they want to know mm -hmm. how your life is, but anyway, let's stop the banter. We have a lot to show. So let's go ahead and let's roll it. Behind the scenes at VR. Okay, so why don't you give everybody a little update, prep everybody for, for what we're going to see. We're not going to spoil anything. But um, why don't you just kind of run people through like what to expect today. Sure. Yeah, we've worked with various members of our art department this week to put together four different videos uh, highlighting aspects of kind of like what they're working on. We'll see progress in the animation suite. We'll see a new armor set. We'll see how we got to that new armor set. Uh, and we'll see a large showing of Thronefastian architecture. Um, before we get to those items, though, let's start with a visual update on the world building. All right. Punch it, Chewy. <laughs> nice. So we're going to roll videos. Uh, we'll probably be quiet during the videos. We've got some audio as well. So here we go. So a lot of different items to unpack here, and I'm looking at the chat. So for those of you that some of you have said, oh, that's that stuff's been shown before. It's not new. 
oh, it's new. <laughs> Go back and look at some of those old videos. The area has been built up tremendously since the last time we've shown it. Uh, tremendously. You'll, I think you'll shock yourself to go look at that in the past. And then obviously a lot of texture work, a lot of new uh, mountain terrain style stuff. So there's, there's quite a bit there. Um, so David, before I say like what I'm excited about there and some of the stuff that stood out to me, why don't I toss it your way and you kind of talk about your take on some of that? Sure. Yeah. I, I mean, obviously I love seeing the progress of the world. You know, I'm a big fan of scale uh, in our game, and I really think the giant ruins, you know, show that off beautifully. Uh, and as you said here, we've really expanded on the area. We've really built it up. You know, you're seeing it's not that's just not one, you know, shot, for, you know, of something from five different angles. Those are different points of interest. Uh, but, you know, there's a real sense of open space here. And, it, you know, it's, it's like you're not just fun players being funneled into Area X. You know, I really love the open worldness here. Um, you know, we had JN on Bring Out Your Devs this month, uh, shameless plug, to become a VIP. Uh, and he went into... Oddly what enough into on that one, though, David. Oddly enough on that one. But we'll get into that a little bit later. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and he went into uh, what goes into building an area like this uh, from a lore perspective and how once the assets are in game, how they often affect each other. So sometimes our world, builder, our world builders will take liberties and they'll build an area out. Uh, more than was originally planned. And so he'll have to occasionally retrofit the lore to, you know, you know, fit what he's, what's been built. Uh, and I think here you can really see all the work done to the giant ruins and why it was certainly the case here where some of the lore was built out and um, really sort of uh, how, again, how they both impact each other. Yeah, for sure. And <clears throat> even rolling back behind the scenes a little bit more because the, the giant ruins update was a really big deal. For me, um, when we started working with capturing some of this stuff and when it was put into an area, we could actually record it um, and see it on some of our development servers. And uh, for me, the, the thing that we've talked about. Uh, wait, can you roll? Can you roll the footage again while we're talking without the sound? Yeah. Is that possible? You guys want, yeah, I can roll it. Yeah. Um, as beautiful me, as we both are, I think they want to see the stuff. Yeah, no problem. I'll roll it without the audio behind it. I know everyone liked the music, but I mean. Yeah, uh, the music, that music was pretty epic. I mean, I know it's, we've had it for a while. Yeah. Definitely. Okay. So that's, that's down right now. So, um, while that's playing, you know, one of the things that's interesting is keep in mind, these are giant ruins and we've talked in internal meetings about some of the assets that are going to be added to this. Like imagine the tools or equipment or like a shield that a giant would hold and you're running there as a halfling or a human. And there's these huge larger than life items that can really like make this area feel even more impactful. Like that's, it's going to be really cool. Like, I'm really into that. But the other part of this that's exciting is, you know, shout out to our VIP testers here. You know, we're looking forward to getting um, getting AVP back in here. You know, I can't say exactly when, but that progress in Hangor is a huge part of getting us there, getting that right. So it's really cool to be able to show that because, you know, we've shown some screenshots before, David, of some of what they're working on, but nothing, anything like that. The progress is is really going strong with the building types being changed up, and um, just Tim's been doing a wonderful job in there for sure. So, yeah, and it's and it's really you know obviously Hangor is not in a new area. If you've been in a you know if you've watched us for a while, like you've seen it before, but there you know you can see the difference, the major difference between what it used to look like and where it's going. Um, obviously, not finished, work in progress, but they're really like building it up again and expanding areas and really getting into the detail of what it means environmentally to sort of live in this space. Um, and so I think, I think that's really coming off too. I'll let this finish cause it's just about to finish, but uh, David, you want to like tease what we're about to show next? Uh, yeah, I think we're going to see the new armor set next. Is that correct? That is correct. So let me get the audio on again here and we'll show this. Probably end up showing this one a few times, so let's go ahead and show a new armor set.
Okay. All right. You want to roll that one one more time without the they... audio again? Yep. So yep. yeah, I, again, so, I yeah, they, you want, can, to, they uh, want to see the stuff. And Hey, it's better than, <laughs> than my ugly mug. So I am fine with that. So uh, let me go ahead and mute that audio, but uh, here yeah. we'll go ahead and uh, roll it again. So pretty neat stuff. What, do, what are you thinking here? Well, obviously, first, we want to thank Philip who worked on this. Uh, what you're seeing here is a mesh form process, which helps form the armor sets. So this helps our artists with visual clues on how the workflow can be. Uh, the time put into this planning method and the way the workflow goes through this process allows the texturing of the armor sets to have a much faster turnaround. Yeah, the process itself is pretty cool. Um, you know, one of the things we try to do, um, and I say we, but you know, everyone knows I'm talking about the art team. Um, one of the things they try to do is create something so that getting to the end part is going to work really well. So the, the staging and planning parts has really been improved with what, uh, and we talked about this in the past with, uh, Dwart and, um, Tara, uh, we talked about like some of the processes they've changed and how they're designing and, and how the character models are being changed. And that's enabling an easier way to design armor. So that process is really cool. And he kind of gave us a little, uh, little bit of insight there. Now here's, here's the thing and chat, you, you can all take part in this. Now I'm going to be honest, David does not know the answer to this because I got this pretty late last minute from Philip and I, I kind of hit it from him because I wanted to tease him a little bit. So David, which racial armor? So I'm giving you a hint here. Uh, okay. You, it's, it's a hint. Racial armor. Do you think that that is in chat? What, what do you, Everybody saw oh, it. If it's a racial, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna look at. I'm not gonna look at the chat. Uh, you're putting me on the spot here. Um, <laughs> let's see. Well, I mean, it could be human. Uh, uh, I mean, or there was like the blue kind of figure of the dark mirror. But mm -hmm. I, I guess if I had to guess, like gun to my head, I'm gonna go maybe because there's like the jewel thing in the middle. So I'm gonna go archive. You got it. You got it. And uh, chat was chat was all over there. Now the blue guy is that's just like a place sort of model like it's almost like a mannequin you're building the armor on but i love that you said that because i think that got some people that i saw dark mirror so yeah that's uh you know we haven't talked much about the archive um and you know they're still in the very early process of design but we're trying to make sure the armor sets and such are created and uh philip's done a great job with that so yes that was that is the archive uh, some of their armor i'm gonna get in such trouble from jan you know the jewel thing in the middle like, <laughs> like I'm, I'm sure that has a name i'm sure like Des or uh, or, or Theric Ther probably know what the, exactly what that gem is, but that's funny. The jewel thing in the middle. Eh, well, yeah, I can go yeah. with that. Hey, yeah. I got archive. I got archive. You so. did. You did. Um, so before we uh, jump into some of the next stuff we're going to show here, um, I just do want to remind everybody for anyone who's watching for the first time, or maybe has newly discovered us, or even those fans out there that have supported us for a while, just a reminder that Pantheon is a crowdfunded game. Uh, for those who are discovering the game, our progress relies heavily on the support of our community. So I just want to make sure I say that. Right, David? Yeah, 100%. And obviously, there's a lot of ways to support the project. You can follow us across social media, the platforms. You could share the content you're excited about with friends and family. Give Continue to give feedback on what you see. I know some of you have no problem with that. Uh, for those looking to help support development in a bigger way, obviously, check out our pledge page on PantheonMMO.com. Uh, find a pledge that works for you. Awesome. Thank you. So we're super thankful you guys come out to these streams and continue to make this community honestly truly amazing. So um, hopefully now that we've uh, recognized you amazing people in chat and watching uh, in dem on demand, let's go ahead and show off some updates to animations. Thank you. 
So I couldn't resist uh, throwing that dying last look into the camera to end that video. I just like that has to be the last piece. No, no, no Ronix were hurt in the making of those animations. <laughs> I love uh, the, the chat for those that aren't watching live. The chat keeps saying, oh, sad face. Because if you noticed, because as uh, Dwarf has shown in the past with some of his uh, facial rig tools, that facial animations can happen with emotes and, and different animations. So he's literally laid on the ground with like the saddest face, like I'm dying, save me. <laughs> uh, I, that was some strutting attitude over there too. I, I You know, the run and the walk look great. I think uh, my favorite is definitely the, the you know, the, the dual wielding swords and what, you know, what, the, what it looks like even when you're not swinging one of them. It's pretty cool. We talked, um, geez, we talked a bit ago about like idle animations and how much of a difference they make when you're playing the game. And it looks like, you know, wait, I'm going to ask, do you want to run it? Do you want to run animations again? I can. How about that? Yeah. Let me just mute him again and we'll go ahead and run that while we're talking. Um, so like the idle animations, even for standing, it's such a difference. Um, in my opinion, I mean, I, I won't get ahead of myself here, but why don't you, we kind of talked about Duarte and, um, Terra like built these a little different and like what's going on with the animations. Obviously it's going to be really rewarding uh, payoff when we get these into the game and the players like our, our VIP testers can actually feel the changes and you'll see it in streams. But you know, what are your thoughts or, or what can you add to that? Yeah. I mean, you know, as we stated before in our conversations with Dwart and Tara, the changes come with how we rig our models and how we've achieved stronger animations kind of with the less bones. Uh, when it comes to rigging and, and animation capabilities, you know, it makes the overall template much easier to work with and getting new models in game, which is, I think is really anybody, that's all anybody really cares about anyway. Uh, and the animation, you know, and the animated sort of once our base animations are complete. Um, I don't know. I'm excited. I, I, you know, there's things coming in, obviously. I don't, I'm, we're not, we're, I'm trying not to over tease, but um, I'm excited there's uh there's a lot to be excited about as far as the you know the animations are just so much smoother than they have been and it's really sort of everything's kind of coming together yeah and i think um there's, it's a really important thing to mention is like it's there's new animations we've created and we're tweaking some of the the standard animations that we're in because remember we're going to be putting new models in but we're not going to have every model going in at once so we'll have some of our old models and some of our new models as we work through the process of getting the rest of our races in and, and, and such and can't go into any detail on like when that's going to be exactly but so the process is as we put a new model in we need to make sure we've we've done a lot of adjusting internally the team's been working on our old animations to fit to the new rig but we'll find some things here and there um i won't say much but there's a funny one when you sit with one of the new models and their face gets crazy looking you know, it's just these little things that we have to like tweak and edit so we can get them right to show and then fully put them in and be good to go. But the cool part is, is once a lot of those base animations work for one of the models, there'll be very little that needs changed because of the way we're designing the, the bone structure and the bone structure being better. So it's really like the first one that goes in is going to take the most work and then it, rolling the new animations in will be super easy because they're designed with that rigging kit. So it's just... Um, you know, give us give us some time. But once we get one in, we hopefully will start showing more off. But uh, yeah, the animations are a big difference. So. Yeah, agreed. What I was saying earlier, though, it was um, and I, I didn't want to get too far ahead, but with those idle animations, like the, the standpoint of like even the small little movement of your body and like the breathing and in video games, it's a little exaggerated to us being here, but like it's so much less robotic feeling or like you're just standing there. Right. Like and I think that's a huge difference that sometimes is subtle but and you don't notice but when it's not there you do right the the character feels real like just stuck like a block um and these little animation types that even just how they breathe when they're standing there or little animations that might happen are what really can uh change how the feel of the characters are and obviously you're going to be staring at a character more than anything you do really right so i mean some people will play in first person but you're still going to look at characters in front of you. So um, it's it's huge. It's a big part of what makes an MMORPG awesome, plus the fact that we want to be able to own our characters and create that story for our characters. So our friends and our guildmates and our enemies, they matter. So it's important we get that right. Immersion, baby. Immersion. <laughs> uh, <laughs> just um, Okay, so let's get into our last segment of the, for the night, right? We're at the last segment, is that correct? Yeah. Uh, um, 
So we've talked a lot about biomes uh, across the plat a lot of different platforms. We've talked about it on recent streams, uh, in recent newsletters with, you know, we featured Rob and Jared's work. Uh, it's been discussed on Parring the Veil. One thing we believe is important to making biome work uh, and be visually understood is the building structures of the dominant race that live within the area or have built up the area. In this next segment, uh, we're about to show you a lot of shots of the throne fasting building aesthetics uh, and a large amount of variation in the building types. Let's roll the video maybe, and we can, we'll discuss a little more as we're talking. Yeah, it's, uh, this one's going to show a lot, so pay attention. Everybody will roll it again after for sure. <laughs> and here we go. Awesome. So um, I'll get that going here in a minute, but I just want to make sure I give thanks to Leo on our art team for providing a huge number of shots that you saw there. I was like, Leo, we would love to see some of these building shots that haven't been in yet, if you can. And um, as chat said, is if anyone was looking at those and thought they were concept art, that was those are 3D models, as you can tell by kind of cycling around the shots, like they're ready to be placed. So in that last part, you showed a Saul um, some of them placed. And for those that haven't seen, um, haven't been in VIP testing or haven't seen recent streams, or maybe you saw a little bit of that from Co, uh, the town of Avelia itself has been built out quite a bit. So like a lot of these buildings are in game um, or are being placed as as we speak in Thornfast and AVP. Um, so a lot of these are going to be used across human dwelling or, or dominant areas for humans, as David sort of said, leading in. Um, the end shot. So that end shot, what's cool is it was funny because he's like, I really don't want to take shots of the bridge building because it looks better once it's in game. And I said, well, I can get a picture of that in game. <laughs> so I went and that's why that end shot's there. So you can kind of see um, how much of Alia has been built out. But then to see that bridge uh, building, which the first time I saw that in game, it was really cool. Um, you know, we have those moments just like when we show them to you where we have that, oh, this is cool. Check this out. Um, so, so pretty cool stuff there. So, David, if you want to go and give some thoughts, I'll throw that on again for everybody. Yeah. I mean, you, you said it. I mean, obviously, Avalia has been built out quite a bit uh, since the last time we, we showed it. Um, you know, the inner area of the town with shops has been slightly changed. But as you run towards the bridge area, you know, the town has been has obviously grown there's more buildings placed feels a good amount bigger um 
and having all the new and you know the buildings can really help with points of interest. Um, and again, making Throne Fast and AVP's presence of humans like feel known. Like this, it's all again about immersion, and and I think the building out of this town and and you know the expansion of it, it feels like a town now, not just a couple of buildings sort of slapped together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's exciting because if it, it kind of presents a template of like how we're going to be building out these different civilizations and just think like once we get through building these, you're know, moving on to the next civilization. And then, you know, again, talking about, we've talked a lot about biomes recently, but think about how those biomes are going to transition or what if you have, you know, a small halfling outpost that's in a throne fastian area, right? So like, you'll notice it quickly because you're like, that building doesn't look like throne fastian, you know, or just seeing little tweaks or things that you see, on buildings or flags and stuff like that so it's it's really neat i mean is it is it different from you know how every game is made no but it's exciting for us because it's really fleshing out that lore right that you talked about with jn so um, yeah it's, it's about like creating a visual vocabulary for each of the races really and again like you said it's nothing new but these are concept art that we've had around for a bit and so seeing these buildings and this town sort of come to fruition is is a, very encouraging for the team i'm sure it's encouraging for the people who have followed us for a while but it's it's even more exciting when you think about what's to come when you have a race like the archive and the uniqueness of what their architecture looks like and what that's going to look like you know this obviously these are the humans and we've seen human talents in games before and you know while they all obviously look great you know I'm looking forward to some of our more unique races and how that architecture is going to look in game. Yeah, for sure. And obviously with anything that's art, uh, especially seeing it this early on, just let everybody remember, remember that there's stages of it. There's going to be tweaks, stuff like that. Um, there'll be updates, you know, graphics won't, I, I love where we're heading with graphics and I enjoy the look and feel, but it's just going to get better and better tweaked and tweaked um, as different things come online and, different processes improve and stuff like that. So just keep in mind, anything you see, especially this early in these developer live streams, they are in development and uh, it's only going to get better from here. So um, so I did want to say that's probably it for today's stream. Um, we'll talk about a couple of quick things here, but before I go, I do want to give one last thanks to our entire art department for their hard work across all these categories and working to get some of these assets we were able to put together for the stream. I loved that we had a lot of visuals today. I hope everybody enjoyed the visual aspects that we were able to provide today to our community. Um, it's exciting to show progress. We said that to start. We want to show when we can and when it's right. But um, I do want to give a couple, one quick schedule change. So if you didn't see in Discord today, we'll be announcing it as well on our social media. But um, we will not be having Parting the Veil this month. Just some unseen circumstances came up. Nothing crazy, nothing to worry about. But obviously, um, David, we've talked a lot. Like our job is to make sure we're not negatively impacting development, that we're taking on the workload. All this content stuff typically comes from a very heavy workload from David, myself, and the NPR team. You know, we obviously get assets and they help, but we try to make it as low impact to development. So sometimes stuff like this is going to happen. Um, but the good news, and David, you kind of teased everybody. The good news is that in the spirit of Valentine's Day, we do want to show some love to the community. So we are going to uh, release um, on special occasion. We're not going to do this all the time, but uh, David, you do bring out your devs. It's a VIP exclusive podcast offering. Um, we'll put it into a video form just, you know, with a still picture, but we'll put it into a video so you can watch it on YouTube or download it on our podcast site. But we're actually going to um, kind of give out publicly the last one that you just did with Jan Gerhardt. So for those that like to hear about lore, how it impacts um, the world, and like we even talked about tonight, like how it impacts the world building actually imports, uh, impacts JN as well. So um, you can expect this uh, release to be in the place next Thursday. Um, so you'll probably see it sometime that day in the afternoon, a little earlier than the normal stream time. Um, but do you want to give any more teases on what people can expect from that interview who haven't got to hear it? Uh, I mean, you know, JN's obviously never at a loss for words, so uh, expect uh, a lot of um, information. Um, you know, but I, I think like you said, I, I think that, you know, people know JN is sort of, the, our, he's obviously our lead writer, and, um, you know, he's obviously well-versed in the lore because he created it, but <laughs> on top of I that, so. yeah, yeah, and in terms of not only just getting lore information, I think the the 
you know, Jan kind of breaks down a lot of the process of what it's like when, you know, he creates the lore and what the next steps are as far as how it, it, a point of interest, for instance, you know, how it goes from lore to actually arriving in game. I think he kind of talks about that a little bit. Um, plus, you get to know JN a little bit, and he's a great guy. He's one of my favorite people. So um, yeah. I'm excited. I think it's an enjoyable substitute. Um, and I think everyone will enjoy it. We're also going to put out a shorter form video for just the art, like a flow through the art probably sometime next week as well. So for those that just kind of want to share something maybe smaller or really get into the art or look into it deeper, we'll put together a little quicker hit for everybody to, to check out just that section if they want. Um, David, anything last that you want to wrap up with here? Um, well, are we allowed to talk about the next pre-alpha yet? Yeah, for sure. Okay, so let's talk about that first. Yep. Um, the dates are, remind me. September February. 25th. September yeah. no. no September no. Saturday. I was reading it from Twitter. <laughs> that would be really. Saturday. They'd be really so upset if it was September. The next one is September. No, it's not. Yeah, no. it's a Saturday, February twenty uh, fifth through it, Sunday, February twenty sixth. Another um, twenty four hour stream. So that Saturday, it's gonna start stream server play whatever we want to call it, play test. Um, it'll start at uh, ten a.m. Pacific Standard Time on Saturday, then run through Sunday. At ten o'clock Pacific Standard Time. So, do we know if characters character wipe or no character wipe? No character wipe, unless something absolutely crazy happens between now and then. No character wipe. So all that VIP uh, testers that have been building up their characters a little bit, grinding through some levels, will be able to continue where they left off. Great, awesome. And if you ha and even if you haven't played, now's a great time to get in. Yeah. Um, but let's see, what else do we have? Um, we have the newsletters coming up. Uh, we have another art feature with, you know, we, we were actually going to put on the stream, but it was so good. We decided to make it a newsletter feature instead, right? We have Esther Shin discussing the creation of signature botanicals and her work on the details that go into biomes in regards to regional flora and things of that nature. Uh, and of course that will, that newsletter will come with an alpha road uh, map update. So don't miss that. Um, yeah. Thank you everyone for joining us tonight and all the support you provide. We'll see you next month. Chop is not here to say it, so I will onward and upward. He's he's in Minus. chat. He's definitely in uh, chat. So okay. <laughs> Minus. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, just thanks everybody. Definitely onward and upward, and uh, take care, everyone. We hope you enjoyed the visuals tonight, and uh, we'll see you with more content not too far from now. So thanks everybody, and we will see you soon.